right, we'll get started with Dusty Baker. Uh, Dusty, if you want to just start with your thoughts on Arkady tonight. Yeah, well, Arkady was, I mean, he was awesome. And, uh, you know, Maldi directed him through the game. Uh, he had his changeup working. Uh, he located his fastball well, threw a couple, uh, you know, a few good breaking balls. And the only really mistake that he made was to, <clears throat> was to, uh, uh, to Lewis, you know, um, he hung a slider to Lewis. It was a dangerous, dangerous here. He's going to be a great ball player, and uh, you know they have a, you know, a very good team. I mean, they played us tough. I mean, we had to do everything we could to, you know, try to win that game today, and we really wanted it, uh, especially because you don't want to go back home to play that fifth game if you don't have to, and then we had to burn Verlander. So now, you know. Um, you know, both of our teams, Texas and us, are pretty, you know, rested in our pins and, uh, and in our starting rotation. So it should be a, should be a heck of a series. We'll go on the left here. Yes. Uh, Steve, the last two times that Arkady's started, you know, it's been in really big moments. You see, you know, something extra in him when he has to kind of step up in those occasions. Well, you know, I first noticed Arkady, you know, who I didn't know who he was in, in the World Series in 2019. And, uh, and I was like, man, who is this dude out there? And, you know, I'm very partial to, <clears throat> you know, to pitchers from Mexico because of the guys I played with, Fernando, Maximino, Leon, this various guys that I um, – and then I played in Mexico. Uh, we, you know, we had a guy on our team that reminded me of uh, over Kitty, uh, Vicente Huevo Romo. And, uh, you know, the guys from Mexico, they, they can throw their off speed over the plate. And, uh, and and usually have a good change up and a good breaking ball and uh, you know I started noticing Arkady at that time in that game in 2019 and I didn't know him but you know he's a big game guy he kept using uh, the clock to his advantage to to you know to <clears throat> compose himself and uh, he scared me a few times because he was like down to one second or two seconds and I'm like come on Arkady and. You know, we got burned one time tonight with Neris on with, with the with the pitch clock, but you know he was outstanding. Our whole bullpen, Neris was great. Um, <clears throat> uh, Abreu continues, you know, to be uh, great, and then um, you know Presley threw a uh, outstanding ninth inning, and him and Maldi been working together for a while, and that's the uh, shows the um, you know the value of of uh, experience and guys working together. Go right in the middle. Uh, talk about the series uh, Brio had. You know, I know he's played a lot of games here, you know, playing with the White Sox before this. Kind of talk about uh, the big series he had. Well, yeah. I mean, I told him for the series, I said, hey, I mean, you're very familiar with this ballpark. And you're very, I mean, there's some ballparks that, that you perform well in. And uh, there are other ballparks that you have trouble in. And, uh, and he was outstanding here. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that's very even-tempered. When he was going poorly, he told me, it's, it's okay, it's okay. And then when he's going great, he's like, it's okay, it's okay. And I'm like, when he was going poorly, I was like, man, it ain't okay. But, you know, you know, in his mind, he knew that, you know, it was okay. Over to Jerome on the right. Speaking of that mild-tempered or even-tempered, you kind of had that throughout the season when you guys weren't going well. You kept saying you know what this team is capable of and what you're going to do. Right. I, how do you maintain that thought when there were times it looked like you could Well, there are times it. when you just have to rely on, on, on faith and, and rely on a guy's background. And I was always taught that water, you know, seeks its own, its own level. Uh, and it took a little while, but, I mean, I mean, he's been – he drove in 29 runs in, in, in September. That's, that's getting it done down the clutch you know, in the clutch. And then he had a big series here, and hopefully he can continue that uh, against Texas and hopefully the World Series. Anything else for Dusty? Abreu's here now. He's Bring cold. Jose. He's cold. I can see he's cold. He's, sh he's shivering. <laughs> All right, we'll get started with Jose. And Jen Loy Herrera is the interpreter. Go to Danielle on the far right. Jose, when people are talking about you underperforming, does that type of talk fuel you or, or how does that affect you emotionally? 
cuando la gente dice que no estás rindiendo, no estás haciendo el trabajo, ¿eso es algo que te da energía a ti? ¿Cómo tú creas con eso? Es son cosas que yo no controlo. Lo que otra gente dice no controlo. Pero nadie me va a quitar la persona que soy yo. You know, those are things I can't control. You know, I can't control what other people say or think, but you know, I'm not going to change who I am. We're also joined by Jose Urquidy. Go on the left over here. Um, Jose Abreu, um, did you have to tune out that noise kind of early in the season when you, know, you were in your home real streak and um, you know, you're still trying to get it going with Houston? Tuviste que no hacerle caso a ese sonido, a esas cosas que decían la gente cuando estabas en la racha que no había conectado junto y no estabas jugando bien al principio de la temporada. Lo más importante que yo entiendo es que tengo una familia que me ama. Tengo dos hijos que siempre están ahí, que me, me motivan todos los días. Tengo una madre que, que siempre está ahí. Tengo una esposa que, que Dios me la bendiga y una institución que siempre ha estado al lado mío y, y unos compañeros que independientemente del momento siempre han estado ahí, ¿qué más yo puedo pedir? The you know, most important thing is that I have a family <coughs> that supports me. You know, I have two kids that love me. My mom has always been there, my wife, which, you know, God bless. And, you know, obviously I had an organization that's always been there for me and my teammates that independently of the moment have always supported me. So what else can I ask for? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll go to Daniel on the right. For Urquidy, your role in your career in the postseason has varied so much. Just how do you prepare for, you know, really not knowing every year how you're going to be used and even, you know, week by week, series by series? Yeah, that, that's a hard position being, being in, in that position for sure. But I got to prepare my mind. Uh, I got to be ready for any situation. I know this is was kind of hard, kind of hard. One of more hard in my career, but I know, I know we are going to be at this point in this series, and I was waiting for that chance. They gave me the chance, and, and, and I did my best for supporting the team, throwing the ball well for, for being in this series. Go over here on the left again. Um, for both of you, you've seen what this team is capable of, you know, seven straight, um, advancing to seven straight ALCSs is, is pretty impressive. But, you know, the regular season wasn't, was maybe a little more challenging than in some previous years. Do you think working through that has kind of made you a stronger team at this point? Obviamente, <coughs> ustedes lo saben lo que es capaz este equipo, llegar siete series de campeonato corridas. Pero en la, en la temporada regular fue algo un poquito más difícil. Uno chamo, el equipo luchó un poquito más. ¿Eso tú crees que es algo que ayuda al equipo a llegar aquí? Yo creo que en la vida tenemos que entender que son años diferentes. Son años que la vida nos pone a prueba al 100%. Y, y como nos ponga a prueba, si de verdad eres un, un guerrero como son, como son los muchachos de esta institución, uno tiene que aceptar las cosas como venga. You know, I think in life we, we need to understand it's a different year. Life will put some challenges out there for you and make it difficult for you. But, you know, these group of guys, they're all warriors. And when they're warriors, you know, there's nothing to worry about. Jerome. For Arkady, that's he described you as a big game pitcher. What makes you so good under pressure? <clears throat> yeah, in that kind of situations, I think I have a uh, big hunger there. So obviously my focus and my, and my plan prepared has to be uh, very clear and I have to put all my mind on it. And, uh, and I mean, I feel very comfortable being here with this team pitching there, uh, uh, creating a good plan attack with, with my catcher. And I know I got good offense and defense back me. And, uh, that's made on myself feel a lot of confidence. And I think that's why in that kind of moments, uh, I know that I got to compete and, and throw the ball well through the zone and put hitters away. Anything else? Thanks for coming in, guys, and good luck next week. Okay, thank you. Have a good night.